Just got a box from Dexter Axel in the mail, and it's heavy. This can only mean the lift for our Airstream. Instructions, a lift block with powder coat chipping off, another lift block, another lift block, another one, and a bag of 16 bolts, grade 8, that are going to bolt this all together. Let's go do it. Every trailer owner is different, and we all use our trailers differently. If you don't need more ground clearance, don't do this. If you do, it's one of the cheapest ways to gain ground clearance and avoid damage to stairs and other things like that if you're getting off the road a little bit or if you simply find yourself dragging more than you'd like. Because Airstreams are designed to be aerodynamic and lightweight, the frame by itself isn't very strong and the shell by itself isn't very strong. But when you put the two together and bolt them together, they're quite strong. So you can't treat an Airstream frame like you might treat the frame of a vehicle or another travel trailer. So if I were to crank on this stabilizer jack, it's actually going to tweak the frame and kind of tweak everything. The doors will be hard to close, things won't line up. That's bad news. So you only want to jack from the points that are meant for jacking and replacing spare tires. So the first thing I want to do is raise the stabilizer jacks because when I lift it, it's going to tip a little bit. And the last thing I want is to tip this onto the stabilizer jacks and bend the sides of the frame up. So Airstream owners have to be a little bit more careful than your traditional travel trailers because of that. Just like when you're changing the tire on your car, you want to get the lug nuts loose while the wheels are on the ground because when it's in the air, they're just going to spin. So we're going to break all the lug nuts loose. We're not going to take them off, just break them. I'm looking for a good place to lift it with the jack and then another place to put the jack stand so I can take all the wheels off. When you order your Dexter lift kit, you need to know which Dexter axle you have. Usually there's a tag on the axle and if you take a picture of this, you can send it to Dexter and they'll tell you which axle we have. This is a number 11 axle. Dexter axles are cool. You can see there's no leaf springs under here like a traditional uh, trailer. They're actually independent suspension and they've got a square tube with rubber dowels in each corner and then a smaller square tube inside of that. So when the wheel goes up, it twists it inside. Those rubber dowels squish and that allows this one wheel to move independently. That's why Airstreams tow so great. Now when you're lifting your Airstream or jacking it up, you need to use these jack plates. That's the only place you can lift them from. There's one here, one in between the two axles, and one in the back. This whole rail goes all the way back. So we're going to be unbolting the axle here, dropping it down three inches, bolting our block back in, and then we've effectively raised the whole trailer up three inches. More like we're lowering the axle three inches, which in turn will lift everything back up when the tires are back on. Hope that makes sense. Make sure your jack can handle this. This is a 7,000 pound trailer. We're not lifting the entire trailer, so my 7,000 pound or three and a half ton jack is gonna be just fine. Okay, now I'm going to go do the other side before I work on it, just because I don't want half the weight on this axle when I'm trying to unbolt it and all that. I'd rather just have the whole thing level. Most people take six to ten hours to do this. We have about an hour left of daylight, but on paper, there's only eight bolts to remove. What could go wrong with that? By now you'd think I'd learned to loosen my bolts several days in advance, but my brain's not capable of thinking several days in advance. It's not even that rusty, it's just really torqued on there. This is one of the most useful tools I've ever owned. I'm gonna put a link of it in the description. It's like 15 or 20 bucks. I have used this thing so many times and it's so helpful. So if you're a wrencher, I highly recommend one of these. It's like a vice grip, it takes up that last millimeter of slack. We'll see how that works. Okay, now's your chance to judge me, but don't pretend like you've never done this before.
Look at that For Ben. For the love of Pete. <laughs> <laughs> now it's time for the impact gun that I packed up. Got it. No, you've got safeties. It's still scary to have you under something. Tourette's not feeling good with me under there. Our neighbor at our last house was fixing his wife's brakes on their Mercedes SUV and he was using the factory jack that goes in the little slot because there aren't many good spots to jack it there. And he had his arms underneath the rotor and the jack dropped and pinned his arms underneath there and he was yelling for the fire or for help for 10 minutes. A neighbor heard, sent the fire department over and they thought, he was going to lose his arms. They lifted it up and miraculously enough, he didn't even have a broken bone, but he lost all the feeling in his hands for a couple years and he's still recovering from that. So we try to be extra careful when we're underneath the vehicle. So the first one wasn't that bad because I could get on both sides of the bolt. This one's going to be a lot harder because the, fr the water tank's in the way and the drum brake's in the way. So it's going to be really hard to get to both sides of this bolt and nut. We'll see what happens. Well, we know what happens. We just see how long it's going to take. Oh, that one's easy. Piece of cake. And there's the axle dropping. Got it. Let's go to the other side. All right. We got two more bolts to remove on this side. And then this axle is completely loose. I can't imagine doing this on a 40 or 50 year old vehicle. That'd be terrible. But I understand why people do. I mean, I would, I would do it too if I had one, but I'm glad my bolts are only six years rusty. Yeah. Ugh. Whew, one more to go. But I gotta remember to support this axle so it doesn't just fall when I take the last one out because there's nothing holding it. All right, I got the four bolts off. I'm leaving them in there so the whole axle doesn't drop. Okay. Got my safety bolts out. So now it's ready to drop. So you can see the bolt went through there and through there to hold the axle in. Now we're going to put this in there and we're going to bolt, let's see, you got to look at my instructions. The spacer should be installed with the open side away from the side mount hanger. So I think we're going to have to install it like this where it goes on the bracket and then in this way. Backwards from the picture, but every frame's different, I think. Okay, so this is our spacer, and it's sitting in here right now on the other side of this channel. We've got a bolt going down to the axle, and then we're going to have a bolt coming through this hole to hold it there. Now you can see these are really tight. That's going to be almost impossible to get a wrench on those to keep them tight. Also, it's up against this freshwater tank, and that means I can't get a wrench on there anyway, even if this weren't the case. So what I'm going to have to do is weld some tabs onto these so that when they spin, the tab catches. To So it's like having a wrench on the top. So on these two bolts, I'm going to have to do that since I can't get a wrench on them. On these bolts up here, I'll be able to get a wrench on just fine. But it's not a bad idea to have that on every single bolt. That would be really cool if that was an option from Dexter because that would save you from having to have a wrench on that all the time. Yeah. Aren't they beautiful? No, they're not. This is a total hack job, but all it needs to do is prevent that from spinning. So when I get this through the hole and I put the nut on it, it starts rotating, it's going to block it so I can actually get the nut all the way on. 
But it would be cool if they'd included uh, bolts like this. I used to have an old 91 BMW and all the bolts had these little tabs like this so you didn't have to have a wrench on both ends and it was the greatest thing ever. Anyway, hopefully this works. If it breaks off, I'm really screwed because then I can't get a wrench on this because I've made it not hex anymore. I think this will be plenty strong though. This is pretty beefy. Last night we left off where I built those custom tabs to keep the bolt from spinning. And I've got them underneath this axle. And it's kind of interesting. I've got my bolts snug down but not totally tight. As you can see here in the bottom, we've got some play there. And that allows the axle to adjust side to side. So what I'm going to do next is center the axle on the Airstream the best I can, tighten that up, and I still think I'm going to need to get an alignment eventually because it can move enough that it might wear the tires funny. Probably not a huge deal on a trailer, but I figure it can't hurt. But here you can see the difference between the lifted axle and the not lifted axle. This helps you see how the bracket is set up in here. All right, so right here we can see the edge of the axle, and here's the edge of the frame. Currently they're flush with each other. On the other side, there's a 16 inch gap. So what I need to do is push the axle that way, 32nd of an inch or 16th of an inch, so the gap on this side is the same between the two. So I'm going to tighten this all down, suck it all up, and this one will be done. Ah, 150. And now my wrench is stuck. I hate that. All right. Come on, that's got to be close. <sighs> My tabs are holding, knock on wood. <sighs> oh, 150 foot pounds on that cheesy welded tab that I made last night. But it worked. That's great. Okay, here's the bracket. There's the one on that side. And here's what the stock one looks like without the bracket. Okay, since I had to run the bolts backwards, they're coming through this way instead of going in. So the threads stick out a little, but they're not gonna hit the tire because the tire's up here. But this one up here is awfully close to the shock body. I think it's going to be okay, but I might consider chopping the extra threads off. All right, we're halfway done. Now I just need to do the exact same thing to the rear axle. Okay, I've never seen these kind of nuts before. They have this little marking on both sides. And what happens is they're easy to thread on this way. Then they get tighter but you can't thread them on this way. They're, it's really, they don't quite match up. So I think it actually kind of pinches the threads. I think it's a style of metal lock nut in there that prevents it, now it's kind of hard to turn, and the more it goes on, the harder it gets. So that kind of prevents it from backing off, I think. I'm not exactly sure how to get this perfectly aligned, so I'm going to try and put it back to the same spec it was before the lift blocks. So here you can see the rub marks from where the washer used to be. So I'm just going to raise this and try and position it to get the washers in the same exact place. And then that'll at least get my, let's see, yeah, forward and backwards perfect. Or close. Ugh. So frustrating. You okay? Oh. 
Just smashed my thumb so hard. Be glad when this is done. Yay. Okay, to torque this one, I'm gonna have to take the shock off. Oh yeah, that was no big deal. Might be time for new shocks. At least bushings. All right. Now I can get this on here. And tighten that. Ugh, finally. Just like cars, on a trailer, like an Airstream, the wheel wells are where you get the most rust. So while I've got everything apart, I'm gonna hit it with some self-etching primer and then my semi-gloss black. Just to cover any rust and keep anything from rusting more. All right, I'm wrapping things up. All I gotta do is center the axle and tighten those four bolts on the bottom. Finish painting the other side and we're done. Close enough. It's an eighth inch further that way. I'm gonna let the alignment guy take care of that. At first I had my reservations about this kit and I didn't think it'd be totally safe. It looked like it could come unbolted. I have zero worries. I'm still gonna mark these and check them to make sure they don't move over time, but these things are on there. <clears throat> Hard to tell. Here you can see the bracket hanging down that used to be flush. There's the uh, new bracket. So yeah, here's the axle, bracket in there. All right, I'm gonna throw the wheels on. Gonna replace that one. Almost all these lug nuts are cracked. Lug nuts are dumb, they're kind of this two shell part where the outer piece is like this really thin tin or aluminum and they're all cracked so I'm just going to go get all new lug nuts but for now I'm just going to put the cracked ones on just to get the vehicle off jack stands. Doesn't look ridiculously high. It's still lower than a lot of other travel trailers out there. Let's see if the stabilizer jacks reach the ground now. Yep, there's still about this much left on the threads inside. It definitely looks a little bit higher, but not ridiculous. It doesn't look scary. I'm thinking I'm gonna scrape a lot less now. We'll see you with some more real world testing. We'll keep you posted. It was a fun install. I'm glad it's over with though, cause it is chilly out here. Now I gotta clean up this mess before it rains.